There we go. Welcome aboard, all you wonderful groomers, pet stylists, and canine cosmetologists. You found the Traveling Groomers Podcast, where we discuss lessons learned from mobile and house call grooming. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Bear Anthony. Any moment now, we'll be joined by my co-host and friend, retired mobile groomer and educator extraordinaire, Mary Aquendo and very likely a special guest to help us chat about all things grooming, grooming industry related, and just plain fun digressions that I will totally wrangle back to topic. Grab those travel mugs and climb aboard to see where today's topic will bring us. Let's roll. Okay, so we do have a special guest today, and that is Nicole Kalish. I hey, Rich. Kalish. How it's long okay, have, everybody does that? How long have I known you? I like forever. forever. Like ever. Probably at least 15 years, I would guess. Because I've been grooming 20. Yeah. I a minimum 15 years. I remember when you were competing with your, your standard? Mini dogs. Standard poodles, mini poodles, wire fox. I'd borrow Bichons, I'd borrow carries. And and part of the reason I remember that is because uh, at that time, Ricky, my golden retriever, was coming to the trade shows as our my demo dog for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is Ricky, Mister. I didn't never met a poodle I didn't love. Ricky had a thing for poodles. Oh my God, he loved poodles. Unfortunately, poodles did not necessarily love him back. <laughs> I, I think it was the like, ooh, golden. You know, they knew. They knew back then, Mary. Yeah, what was coming back then? Yeah, <laughs> they said, "No, thou shalt not pass." So, actually, one of my favorite Ricky stories, as far as poodles is concerned, is that we were at the HH Backer Show, and you know that little cramped little office thing that they have, the modular office. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there with with Ricky. We're I guess we're waiting to get paid or whatever, and Suzeka walks in with four of her standard poodles. And Ricky was like, oh, my God, poodles coming to me. And the all four took one look at Ricky, had that look on their face like, ew, and then proceeded <laughs> to smush Sue up against the modular wall to get away from Ricky. <sighs> I'm pretty sure that wall was going to flip Go over. Go over? Yeah. God, that was the old days. Was that Chicago backer? That was Chicago backer, yeah. That was like one of my hometown shows because I'm from the Chicago area. And oh, I while love I loved it, they had the best ribbons. They had good prize money, good judges, but it was kind of a pain because you had to bring your own table. <laughs> and it was the the logistics of the place was difficult, but we did it. You know, we stayed at the, whatever the hotel was across the street from from that. I don't remember what oh, it is God. anymore it's over there. Um, I know it. Like, I can't think of it. I can't say it. So, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning, apparently somebody was smoking in the room. Oh, boy. Yeah, and the fire alarms went off at 2 o'clock in the morning oh. in Chicago in October. <laughs> it is a little chilly. A little cold. Yeah. Cold, and you know what? So, you can't take the elevator down. You got to take the stairs down. And literally, Ricky's, like, shoving people out of the way. Going, oh, <laughs> fire, fire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. If that happened, because I thought about it as I was on my wheelie, my mini scooter, not putting any weight on the leg, being really good at Chicago, I thought about what would happen if the fire alarm went, fire alarm went off, and I decided I would walk down those damn stairs. You'd have to. Right. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat. I have a bum knee, so I, I think I'm going to start getting lower level rooms now So you brought now, that up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw you had a um, knee replacement. How long ago was that again? It's three years ago. But I've had a revision oh, about wow. a year later. Okay. And I'm actually going back to um, have the whole thing replaced. I'm allergic to the metal. So. Wow. Yeah. I don't have a surgery date yet, but it's coming. That's, that's. All the people that say it's the best thing I ever did. Not in my case. I wish I wouldn't have done it. 
<laughs> not well, if you're yes. allergic to the metal. Yeah, they don't okay. test for that because it's not very common, I guess. So until like after the fact and you go through 10 million other tests so they could figure out what's wrong and we've kind of come down to that. Okay, but now do they know what metals you are and aren't allergic yes. to? Can they give you one that will work? Then you can say, yes. if this if this would have happened three years yes. ago, it would, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so you have to get actually, my insurance doesn't even cover it. Like that's, it's so bizarre. There's like a couple labs that do this. You get your blood work done at home. You send it to this lab in Chicago and uh, I'm allergic to the nickel, like mostly. And then somewhat of chromium, I think it, it was. Uh, so they'll do like a titanium now, I guess. Okay, okay now, so the insurance would rather spend way more money. Isn't it nuts? I know. Yeah, and a lot of aggravation, let's just say. <laughs> All right. Now, question, because I have my pre-op meeting with the, the, the surgical team, doctors, whatever, tomorrow. So what upgrades are you going to ask for? Because I'm thinking of, like, Jetpack is my main upgrade <laughs> that I want to ask for. Honestly, I just want it to work and not hurt and not be swollen all the time. Because that would be great. Range of motion would be great. Mine's very limited. Uh, I I can't really run. Not that I need to run, but, you know, I do show poodles and they have to run a little. Yeah. yeah. That's like my main goal, to be honest. Like, I want to be able to get in the show ring again. And it would probably not be very pretty if I did at this point. <laughs> Is your gait would dis distract the judges? Oh, the oh, absolutely, would not be elegant. No. All right, we'll leave it. Damn up it, then. Mary! I did yeah. it again. I did it again. What did I you do? I didn't look at what time we started recording. And I also, what was that? Three thirty. Oh, excellent. So then we're right on schedule. So I have approximately one minute to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 224 of the Traveling Groomers podcast, recorded on, I forgot what month it is, August 21st, and it will be airing on, oof, I didn't even write that down. When will we be airing this month, uh, Mary? 224, next week. Oh, okay. I didn't write it down because I didn't know at the time. Okay, I'm so for those who are wondering what next week is... The 30th, August, whatever the Wednesday is, the last Wednesday in August, that's when it's airing. Don't ask well, me. Uh, my days are. Oh, mm. 830. I actually wrote down 8 to 24. Uh, I don't know. My brain. Okay. My brain is off. Okay. So let us take our first commercial of the break. I, yeah. I know when I'm on the road grooming, I want to keep things rolling along. With a nine-foot clearance, Handry Mobile Grooming Vans actually fit through most drive throughs to make lunch and banking on the go a breeze. With their clean-running diesel engine getting up to five hours runtime per gallon, you're spending less time and money at the pump. Visit Hanvey.com today to configure the mobile grooming van of your dreams. Okay, so... You started off just just regular old groomer. You were a mobile groomer at one point. I was. I went to grooming school in like 2004. I went to work for actually one of the instructors, started a shop, and uh, I did that. Uh, it was a pretty cool thing because there weren't really any clients, so I got to build my speed up like slowly. Uh, you know, I worked at a local kennel for a little bit. I uh, worked for one other shop. But by about a year and a half in, I went mobile. Yeah. So I, I got some more training. I started competing in that time. And then I went mobile. So that was 2006 I started mobile. Okay. So uh, you were first mobile in Chicago, correct? That's right. I did uh, four years there. And then we moved to Florida. So our, our first stop in Florida was Orlando because my husband got a job there. And I said, let's go. We'll take the van with. So we did that. Um, I got there. There was a groomer that was I think she was getting out of grooming if I remember correctly and she had a whole lot of doodle clients like she was working kind of with a breeder or something so I immediately like filled my book it was kind of nuts 
um, I would say within six months, I was totally full in Orlando, you know, for having arrived there and knowing nobody, it was pretty good. So we did that. And then my husband got a job over in uh, Bradenton. So we are like, yes, let's go move closer to the ocean. Um, I brought the mobile with. Um, so this is about 2012 now. And uh, I kept the mobile for like a year, but I worked for somebody because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I was really interested in working with other people again, maybe being able to train other groomers. Um, so I kept the mobile, but worked for somebody. Then I decided after about a year to uh, open a shop. I sold my van, opened a shop and had that for about five years, which then led me to my job with Andis. Uh, I was actually, you know, retired from competing. I competed all those years. I did all the things I had retired from competing. I started, you know, apprentice judging and then judging and speaking. And I wanted to, you know, rep or be an ambassador with one of the brands. And Andis just happened to be the clipper I got in my grooming kit back in 2004. And I still used them. Um, so I was kind of, I would say, trying out to do that. They had me come to do a show and, you know, do demos in the booth and, it, that was all great. I worked with Tammy Sear uh, at that show, and she's a and a global educator. And the gal that had the position I have now uh, got a big opportunity with a, some big franchise. So she said, you know, you should apply for my job. And I was on that website like so fast because I really wanted to get out of grooming day to day. You know, back then my knee wasn't too bad, but I already had back surgery, had tendonitis, you know, probably was leading to carpal tunnel. Uh, and I, I saw that as like, you know, how do you move up in this industry or into a different position, but still be in the industry? And I, you know, it was not many opportunities to do that in this small industry. And and I got the job. So I am the global education manager at Anda for the animal segment. Um, and not only do we uh, do small animal grooming like cats and dogs, but we also do cattle equine goat sheep pig all that stuff so that was a big learning experience for me that the livestock and large animal i'm not gonna lie that sounds really fun it's very cool it is i've learned a ton i mean at the end of the day we're cutting hair right so i know the tools no problem i get that but when you're like why are they cutting it like that or what length are they doing here it's almost like doing like a show dog you know um, you know, because most people that, you know, I deal with are, you know, showing their cattle or goats or sheep or whatever. Um, of course, there's people doing it at home, too. My dog is trying to exit the room now. So if you hear her nails on the floor, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that, that's OK. Una already made her appearance. So that's OK. That's good. Fine. Yeah, you stop here with me now, Pippa. Uh, so, you know, that was, gosh, it's like five and a half years ago that I started with Amber. Um, And it's been fantastic because. You know, some of the people on the education team at Andis, I mean, I've known for years. I used to compete with some of them. Some of them were my judges. I've taken their classes, all of that stuff. Um, and so I manage our educators. Um, of course, we have everybody in the U.S. that you probably know, like Diane. I think she's been with Andis maybe 20 years. Tammy, probably eight years. Tammy Sear. Uh, I've brought on some new folks to the team since I started. Valerie Partinsky, Gabriel, and Francis. Uh, Jessica Moore. Uh, we just added our newest educator, uh, Nathan Austin. Um, and then, of course, we're global. So we've got people in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Japan, UK, um, Canada, uh, plus all those large animal folks as well. Wow. So managing all of that, and you know, it's not just sending somebody to a trade show, there's lots of other things that we do. <laughs> Okay. okay, so let's right, let's wait. break that down a little bit. Wait, I have okay. a fluffy, I have a fluffy cow question. Oh God, because we've all seen the pictures of the cows for show where they're blow, like blowed oh, out, yeah. and they just look Ooh, fluffers. Mm -hmm. Do they do that to the other animals too? And where do I find pictures? I don't think so. Like the cows okay. are, um, you know, they they do use product just like we do on the dogs, okay. um, and they use glue which is interesting. Oh, can I let this dog out of this room, please? Yeah, sure. One moment, ladies. You okay. Come here, puppy. Get up. I'm just Get like... Go, 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 go. There we I'm go. Just like... Don't try to come back. Do they use <laughs> glue for color? So, no, so the glues is to make the hair, like, stand up. Like, if, if you ever watch, they, like, spray oh, the legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they clip through it. So clippers and blades have to go through that stuff. So you need, like, good clippers um, to do that. 
pretty cool. You know, weird question I had when I first went mobile and I didn't, my first insurance company was not one of the ones that were in the pet industry. And I had to answer a questionnaire and one of the, the, the agent gets back to me. She goes, well, they, you're not going to be grooming cows, are you? <laughs> and you're and like, I hope not. I'm like, yeah. You know, at first, it's really, truly not all that easy to get me to be like silent for a minute. Uh -huh. I have to think about it. And I'm thinking, cow? Why would I put a cow in a mobile grooming van? Well, well then I'm thinking, will it even support the weight of the cow in my van? Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually a really maybe, good question. Maybe a mini cow. I mean, there's mini cows. They're pretty cute. Wait. You know, maybe they there... thought like, because like what a lot of professional fitters do, they like travel to barns and they groom all the cattle for the people, you know, or the show cattle. Equine, you know, horse people do the same. They're, like one of my educators, that's all she does. She goes to like farms or barns or ranches or whatever and like grooms all the horses in a day. It's pretty amazing, actually. I give her mad props because I briefly, briefly looked at horse grooming and I'm not sure, it might have been Intergroom that, that Barkley, or not Barkley, but Intergroom actually had a, a horse grooming class there when they go, ooh. Really? Really? They actually had a horse and everything. Well, you know, they require the owners to wash them. They have to be like ready to go and they just come in and clip them. I mean, the people I know, at least, maybe there's a different way, but that's, you know, what I know. And, uh, and I was just thinking that, you know what, because I lived in uh, um, Connecticut, a lot of horse people, a lot of horse mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I can make some like really good money doing horse grooming, right? Yeah. <laughs> By the end of that class, I realized I did not want to be kicked into my next life <laughs> because I didn't know horse behavior. Yeah, that's a big thing. So, okay. Oh, also, yeah. for, for those of you watching on YouTube, if you've seen the various things my face has been doing, something you said just made me Google, many Highland cows exist, and this is a new life goal. <laughs> now, the Highlands have that long hair, like that yes, reddish hair. Yes, yeah, they're, 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 they're cool. reddish, the long <gasps> Yeah, But they come in many. Yeah. And it says they make good pets. This is now like a retirement level goal. I'm so I glad I could, you know, talk about the, that. And you, know what? you have a goal. You. I now, I now have another goal. Although I, I do say, and I'm going to ask y'all's opinion because I think the, the vegan is not the one to ask for this. <laughs> so in the pros of owning a mini Highland cow, it's, um, they're docile, require a little maintenance, hardy in cold environments, take up a little space. And, you know, that generally all this, they make good pets. And then the first thing listed in the cons, after we're discussing they make good pets, it says produce less beef. Don't know anything about that. I, who are we eating? Or what? Are we eating our pets now? No. Okay. We're not. I, I'm just very, that very confused me just a little bit. Yeah, I, th I don't really know too much about it, but like in the show world, a lot of times, like those big winners, I mean, they get uh -huh. sold off. I'm mm. guessing for me. Yeah, I would, I would <laughs> assume. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of the 4-H and the future farmers in America, yeah. that's yeah. what they're raising those for. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I guess. Yeah. And we're very um, committed to supporting that FFA. I mean, the kids, yeah. we go to the show every year and I mean, these kids are just like hungry for knowledge. Of course, FFA encompasses like everything, but at least our little grooming part of it, like they're just, you know, sucking up that knowledge, just like us newbie groomers when we were yeah. new and, you know, not that I was young because I didn't start till I was about 34, um, but it, it's pretty cool. Okay. And I you know how we do. always say, like, go to a dog show to the groomers. It's, like, go see Breed. Go you see. know what? Go to a stock show. Pretty darn mm. cool. Okay. County fair, even. State fair. That was, that was such cool. a good digression. 
that was still somehow on topic that I completely forgot. Yeah, I could go way off track. Break. Sorry. No, no, no. That's our <laughs> tagline. Hang on. I'm going to press another button. We'll be right back. So by now, you know how much I love my Evolution shears. They're the only shears I use. Check out all the options, including customizable non-swivels at evolutionshears.com and give Abby a shout with any questions you might have. Traveling Groomers listeners get $10 off and free shipping with the code on the road, all one word. So check them out today. Your hands will thank you. Mini. I, I love 4 agers mm -hmm. uh, Whenever I get an opportunity to teach first aid to either Girl Scouts or 4 agers they're, they're just, they're, they're the best. The most they're the most polite children you will ever meet. Oh my ever. God. Not only are they polite, they they think about their questions. Well, I have way better questions from that 10-year-old 4 h -er than I've had from some adults. <laughs> well, they're teaching them right, so I that's think, good. I think when you have kids going to work with animals, and I think this like the junior handlers, this probably applies a little bit to, but when you have a kid hand, having to handle and work with an animal that is that much bigger than them, they have to listen. Because mm -hmm. if you don't listen and think and ask questions on a farm, you get, um, you, you get unalived real quick. <laughs> Because bad things happen. Like my grandpa always said, my my mama only had one stupid child and the hogs at him. Oh God. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. <laughs> um, because things things happen. Uh yeah. I don't know where I went with that on that note. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess no topic after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so uh, what other shows you do I meant when I wrote that in my outline I meant like what all grooming dog related shows right. but you do do does Andis actually like have booths at these clubs too Yeah so historically we've had at, at like the FFA National Convention so that was uh -huh. huge it's like 65,000 people that's can you imagine and what's Hershey like 5,000 mm. I mean that's so, what we come from you know and you go to this and it is like you know, as big as Super Zoo. So is it like, I was going to ask, is it like Super Zoo size? Yeah, yeah, it's it's humongous. It's like crazy. It's in Indianapolis. Uh, I don't know if it moves around, but that's where it's been ever since I started at Amda. So maybe it moves, but I'm not sure. Um, so that, and then um, like the National Western Stock Show is in Denver. That We have our cattle educator. Um, you know, he does a clinic there. Um, we used to do a few horse type shows uh but those are more geared towards the hobbyist mm -hmm. not like professional so you know just your everyday people that have horses and want to clip them um okay. i don't know if we have any coming up for next year but um we've definitely been involved in those and we also sponsor a lot of that stuff um our cattle educator he does his own clinics all year long i mean he's traveling god like half of the year uh doing clinics at you know, wherever people bring them. So that's really cool. And we have our, I call him my goat guy. He's goat and sheep. Uh, same thing. They do a lot of ag teacher um, events where they do clinics. And our, our I call him my horse girl. Uh, they do their own clinics. Um, it's really pretty cool. Very cool to see. Amazing. I mean, I knew that Andis did other things besides dogs and cats, but um, I'm I'm pretty amazed. Yeah, well, and then there's the barbering, so that's, you know. And then huge. there's people. The humans, right. Yeah, yeah. And, humans. And in addition to professional groomer, there's my dog barking. Because <laughs> the other dog is in here now. Oh, mm -hmm. There she goes. I knew it would be okay with you guys, right? Um, oh, yeah. So in addition to the professional groomers, there's DIY. I mean, people are always going to groom their own pets. I know a lot of professional groomers don't like that, but um, they're going to do it, and they've done it forever, so... You know, I like honestly, to educate the people as much as I can because I want them to be able to do a good, safe job. Honestly, you know? right now, there are more dogs than there are groomers to groom them. Uh, absolutely. So 
I am for owner education because even if they only get their dogs professionally groomed a couple times a year and keep it up in between, I, I'm i all for, I'm also going, you know, I'm not going, my body's not going to go forever. Mm -hmm. I love educating people. I love talking about grooming because I'm passionate about grooming. Right. So if if you would like me to teach you to groom your dog, I will do it. It will not be cheap. And it mm -hmm. will come with a long list of here's stuff for you to buy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can only be honest, right? I mean. Oh, absolutely. If, if you want somebody to do a good, safe job, I mean, to me, it's got to be safe. You know, does yeah. a haircut have to look fabulous? Not really. And most people don't even care. You know, they just no, want to take some the, hair off. That's the thing. That's the thing. You know, the people who there's two kinds of people who want to groom their own dogs. And the first is they just want that either they've had bad experiences, they can't find a groomer, they can't find a groomer to groom their dog mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to be because it's like a, it's in a rustic coat and it's supposed to look messy and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Or, and, and, or they want to save money and they just don't yeah. care that much about how the dog looks. Mm -hmm. And then the ones who do, who are just groomers in training and don't know it. Because yeah. a lot of people have come into grooming from yes, you starting are right. to groom their own dog and from yeah, learning, and you know, I like this. I'm in a lot of breed groups, I'll call them. You know, mm -hmm. they're just people that own that breed. They're not like yeah. show people. Yeah, Some yeah. people, and there might be show people. Some people might be groomers. Um, I'm in a lot of them. And there's a lot of people that do it. And, you know, when they start out, maybe they're not that great. But, you know, if you're on the page a year later, you're like, oh, now they've groomed their dog like 12 times every month. And they're getting good at it and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And they like the bonding with their animal. I mean, I think that's a big yeah. part of it too. So, it really is. Um, so yes, we have like, you know, all kinds of products for at home and all that stuff too, which means part of my job is making videos for that kind of stuff and writing copy Pretty for cool. that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, I, even my whole team really, I mean, we do testing of new product ideas that come out. Um, you know, we really lean on them because they're grooming every day. Um, I groom my dogs, but I have four poodles, so I'm not the best tester. I could say something looks pretty and it works, but I don't have all the coat types or anything like that. So, you know, that's one really, really great benefit of having the team that we do have. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so Chris, number three. Yeah. What's number three? We have, we have two more minutes. Uh, cutting time went over another one fine i will hit a button but i i, I do just want to say because to my knowledge and this doesn't have scissors really well, we we do but they're really like for uh students okay so That's then i'm gonna say though, if you need any products are. if you need any products tested that doesn't like go over the you know scissor boundary yeah just just yeah or always just looking gonna... for good testers always Chance. I've got your email. Yeah, you got my email. You got my email. And we already had a talk about the wide go guard combs. We don't have not wide the wide blade. card. Not the wide combs. I'll talk to you after. No, the okay. longer ones. The oh, longer. 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 Long. Do you like longer combs? I've never yes. liked them. Like longer I, than an inch. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay, we'll stop talk. recording. We'll talk with it. Okay. Yeah, I got to remember what button I was going to hit again. Uh, <laughs> ah, there it is. I love being a house call groomer, but I hate doing laundry or worrying about asking my clients for fresh towels. Raypet has solved those problems for me with the wet pet disposable towel, taking up much less space than traditional cotton towels and easy to wring out and reuse. These super soft, comfy, absorbent towels eliminate any cross-contamination concerns between pets. And now their new smaller washcloth size can even help those sensitive eye areas. Great for cleaning out wrinkles gently and thoroughly. Need to keep water bowls for your clients on hand that are easy to disinfect, but hate all the room traditional clanky metal bowls take up or just have a very active pet? Their collapsible silicone bowl comes with an aluminum D-ring hook that can be attached to your pet's leash or anywhere else in your van for easy storage. You can get one by itself or in their handy travel kit, along with a set of three tick removers and one small wet pet towel. So stop by their website to check it out, raypet.net, and tell them the traveling groomer sent you. 
Well, we need new commercials. Mary, yours is on the schedule to get re-recorded next week, but you may have to email it to me because I think you sent it to me via Facebook. Yeah, I may have sent it to you via Facebook. Just, okay, just so it. maybe a little slight detour into um, security with your passwords. Now, I'm not, no, I, I, I am not. So, picking, this, this time we're not picking on me. Not picking on Chris. Okay. Because as I was having that conversation with her about making sure you have one unique password for like Facebook to prevent this whole nonsense, I took a look at my password and I realized it's not as unique as I thought. And I went and I changed mine. So everybody should be changing theirs. Yeah. Everybody- There's so many people getting hacked, like so many. It's very sad. And it happens like so fast. I don't know what they did to violate the community standards, but it with the back-to-back trade shows, I wasn't on as much. It something right. got somewhere. I woke up to a notification that says, Did you log on to near Oregon? Click if this wasn't you. And I went, Oh, well, I'm all bleary in Nevada clicking. And the account was already disabled for violating community standards while I was asleep. So whatever they do, they can do fast. I don't know what they're doing, but it's yeah, definitely they changed awful. The name. Yep. Yeah. Fun times. Yeah. Okay. And it's and this bears a more in-depth conversation, not here. But I'm also wondering, because, you know, Facebook has rolled out that whole blue check mark, which, by the way, I have. OK, uh, but I'm kind of expecting a class action suit in, I don't know, three, four years in which I'm going to get my money refunded because it's going to turn out that um, probably Facebook bots were like really quick to like kill pages so that it makes it really difficult to encourage you to get the blue check mark the the thing that the thing that kills me is there's no person to talk to right it's 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 a big circle jerk because i say this was a mistake and i give them my id and they say this decision is not up for review because you violated community standards but i didn't do it god damn it but I, I feel like this could be resolved so easily if I got a human. I'd probably take a couple of days max. But there are yeah. no humans. There's no humans. My Instagram got hacked, but it was like right when I first got into Instagram. Like, I don't know, maybe it was like three years ago. Yeah, so luckily I didn't lose much. But I mean, trying to get a hold of somebody or where do you message and you're getting no replies and um it was awful luckily well, my, again i just started like a new one instead because well they're all connected so my instagram well now connected. they are yeah. yeah 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 back then they weren't <laughs> it's nuts right. anyway anyway so i have on my list let's talk about andis education what type yeah. of things do you sponsor for the show oh god so much <laughs> so um that is actually part of my uh position also is sponsorship so whether it's a sponsorship like at a trade show where we're sponsoring, you know, best in show or whatever, um, I'm responsible for vetting all of that stuff. Um, you know, we've been doing contest sponsorships forever and this is just had their centennial. So in 2022, wow. they were a hundred years old. They've been around a long time, fourth generation family owned still. Um, so they're, they really do support the industries that we serve. Um, so in addition to what everybody, I think kind of knows we do contest sponsorships, but the list of other things we do is is amazing. Um, we do, uh, like 4-H type things. We get small local dog clubs. We get rescues, you know, so I get all these requests and I do have to vet them out. You know, um, what are they asking for? What I hate to say, what do we get in return? You know, is it a post? Is it like they'll put the banner up? Is it, you know, what is it? What kind of cause is it? Um, Is it something that, you know, it really fits into what we do? Um, So, I mean, there's tons of things, tons of things. In addition to that, there is an Andes Foundation that does a lot of community stuff, which a lot of is local. Um, 
and this is in the Racine area of Wisconsin. So just over the border from Illinois. <laughs> uh, I like to say that because I'm from Illinois, so I know the area well from growing up. But um, yeah, so we do a lot of community type things, um, some big national foundation type things. Uh, really, really good stuff. Okay, uh, so nice. my question, go ahead, Chris, I'll let you. No, I just, it was, no, go. All right, so what are some of the avenues of success? So you go to live, so let's say at a grooming trade show. Yeah. So grooming trade show, you have like live demos. Yes. Okay. So we always have that, right. almost always, but yes. So what, what goes into deciding what live demos you're going to do? Oh, it depends on what dogs I can get. Oh, okay. okay. So this is how it works. I put a post out on Facebook, uh, like on my page. I'll put it on Programmer Network because I'm admin on that page, uh, Contest Dog Network. And then there's another one, Comp Competition Groomers Uncensored. Usually it works out pretty well. Not a problem. Uh, lately, it's, well, the last couple of years, everybody has poodles in yeah, the grooming yes. world. So it's like, I can't have poodles all weekend long. Does anybody have a Shih Tzu, please? Um, okay. So so we get a lot of offers from groomers for the dogs. Um, occasionally it could be like a breeder or something that's gonna be at the show because they live locally. So, you know, you know, pays to have connection. Um, I'm so that's so usually hard. how it works. I'm trying so hard to bite my tongue about- About what? Oh, about, you know. So what happens if you find out that an owner has promised a dog in certain oh. condition? Oh. And you well, find I'll... out that there's no way in hell that dog is in the condition they said it was in. We're always prepared. I tell the educator, you do not have to do anything. You know, I'm usually out of show, but not always. Or, you know, maybe I'm not there that day or, or the, at that time. Um, but they all know, like, if you're not comfortable doing it, you're not going to do it. It's really up to them. I leave it up to them. They're professionals. They do this every day, right? It's just like a client in your shop, really. Um, we have other things we can do. If that demo dog is not going to work out, we could do tool maintenance in the booth instead. You know, that's always a great one since nobody oils that their is. blades enough. <laughs> Excuse me. I got the crud coming back from these shows. So yeah. if I sound awful. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's sometimes there just won't be a demo in that spot, you know? Sometimes people don't show up after they confirm that happens. We are also scanning the room like, hey, do you want your dog to have a little trim? Sometimes it's a dog that already competed and maybe they're entry level or intermediate and they would love Diane to look at their poodle and retrim it for them, you know? Um, so it, it, it does always work out for the most part. Super Zoo was a little scary this year. A week before the show, I had one dog. Oh, no. Uh-huh. That never happens. Vegas is always a little bit hard, but, you know, because I think people travel from so far to come there and, you yeah. know, bringing an extra dog is not always easy. Um, yeah, it's, it so, doesn't seem to be as many local groomers who go to that show. And it's odd yeah. because, like, Nevada groomers exist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are breeders that I've gotten dogs from there, even when I was competing, but a lot of the show dogs, like they get shaved down after they're finished showing. So they're not keeping them in coat all the time. So yeah. plus, nope. we don't really typically like to do show dogs because, well, you know, you just don't want to ruin it <laughs> and then get blamed. Even if you didn't you ruin blamed. it. You don't want to get blamed. Even it's just maybe not their yes. style. So we typically like to do pet dogs because that's what, 99.9% .9 of the groomers coming to these trade shows want to learn. You know, so, how do you do a Shih Tzu in a one comb, you know? Right. So no wash and wear dogs, huh? Sometimes we do wash and wear because we oh. have the best uh, de-shedding rate there is, Mary. Yeah. Oh, okay. So oh, that finally came we out have nail saw. grinders, Mary. We, oh, we okay. often do I, that. I, I have four wash and wear dogs. Well, you know, when we're going to be at a show that you have a dog at, let me know. We'll Okay. We'll add them into the demo. Okay, then. Yeah, that was actually, we just, at, at Super Zoo, I was going to say, like, I had one dog a week ago. Gabriel brought three of his own. He drove. And then uh, he had a friend that, like, one was her dog, and two were her client friend dogs. 
So we filled up the schedule minus one spot. And there was a lady there that we had groomed her dogs a couple times over the years. She's just the show patron. And they have this big golden retriever. And they're like, oh, do you want to use the dog this year? I'm like, yes, come at 12 o'clock on Friday. Nice. So Tammy did a whole de shedding and got tons and tons of hair off this dog and then trimmed up the ears and the feet and stuff. So, you know, it works out, you know, it, I always kind of liken it to, it's just like shop grooming. You don't know what's walking in the door, whatever. Sometimes they're not the best dog. They could be very pretty and a beautiful coat and a lot of coat. And then they're just not nice, but you know, we're trained to deal with that. Right. Yes. We, we supposedly are. Okay, and I'm thinking, I'm just, it's like the real deal. All right, I'm just going to throw this out here. Cecil. Cecil's my dachshund. Oh. Which I actually purchased you a doggy can't lift. Do that to them. A doggy lift system so I could cut his nails. My husband wears a pair of welding gloves. So if anybody at a show thinks they want to tackle Cecil, they can do his nails. You let me know. Well, let me ask you, have you ever had anybody else do the nails? Yeah. They don't because... seem to have the same problem we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. You just never know. Yeah. It's not that he's easy, mind you. Right. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Um, what else was I going to tell you? You know, in addition to our U.S., you know, we do the demos in the booth at most of the shows. Um, a lot of our international team, we usually don't have an Andes booth at like a show in Brazil, say. But we have all our distributors everywhere. So they will go work with distributors. So we set up like what they're going to be doing, who's going to get the dogs. Uh, what are they teaching? Um, it's very interesting in Latin America because they do a lot of these like, you know, day long workshop type thing. Mm -hmm. And literally like 300 people come. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. And the energy at some of these, you know, workshop, I call them workshops, you know, day long classes, seminars, whatever, uh, is also amazing. Another thing that internationally, you know, these groomers want education. They just want education. Okay. That's awesome. All right. So I have a question prepped for digression when we come back from this commercial break. Everything else in the world seems to have changed. Positive Ed has too, but for the better. Online learning is here to stay, and positive educational training has brought the trade show to to 10 hours of content streamed live to your sofa or let's be honest grooming table forgot to attend live no problem you have six weeks to watch at your convenience that's three weeks more than non-members and for up to 50 dollars less than non-members paid with a monthly support call and summits tailored to the pet industry and designed to include all learning styles, what are you waiting for? Check out positiveed.com today and get the support you need to take action in your business. Okay. I have a completely, complete digression question, but I thought of it when you were talking about moving from Chicago to Florida. And where are you now? You're, you're not still in Florida, are you? I am. Okay, um, you're Sarasota. Still in Florida. Yep. So which so is been right here about by, 11 years. Right by the ocean. So nice and humid. Yeah. And we just came from Super Zoo. 90 with high humidity or 110 with almost none? Well, so you're asking my opinion on that. Yes. Um, I didn't spend too much time outside in Vegas. Okay. Kind of lived in the convention center in the hotel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, you know, it really wasn't that bad. Even like, you know, I, I had to go to an event one evening and I taxied over. I mean, they had air conditioning. It was fine. Um, I, I don't mind Florida weather, the heat, humidity. My hair gets like super big and curly, <laughs> but. That's probably the only difference I noticed. Okay. Because we, it was, a, since we stay off site, it was a constant debate. And I was like, this is glorious. Like it's a little warm, but it feel like I'm nice. It's a dry heat. Baking, it was dry. I didn't feel like, like it, in Jersey, it can be 76 with so much humidity. Yeah. That I feel like I'm walking in soup. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I will take the dry heat and hanging by the pool and just baking 
and up oh, gets too hot pop in the pool or pop in the air mm -hmm. for two minutes but that's basically what i do in florida oh and I, I i'm not i like to work out i work remotely so i work from florida <clears throat> and so a lot of times i sit out on the patio and do my work okay. get a little hot come in for a little while there you go okay mm -hmm. that was my oh. scheduled digression so of all the trade shows let's just grooming trade shows right? uh-huh so whenever andis is at a trade show that's a huge booth you set up well the super zoom booth is super huge because that is a pet industry trade show, not only do we have our groomer component, like I like to call it, we also have our sales team there meeting with their account. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah, a little different than when we go to Hershey or All American, <clears throat> Pasadena, any of those. Um, so it's it's a little bit different there. Now, we typically do Global Pet Expo also, which is like Super Zoo, but they don't have the grooming contest and stuff. But it's otherwise like Super Zoo. So that's a pretty big booth, too. I, but I always thought global was more manufacturers. Uh, it's it's just like Super Zoo. It's pet industry. Okay. Same thing. Okay. You'll have dog food there. You'll have all the supplements. You'll have boutique items, dog clothes, dog beds, all of that. I never thought to, to go to, to yeah. global because I always thought it was a more of a manufacturer type show. I mean, it's literally the same as Super Zoo minus the grooming, you know, uh, what do they call that? The grooming area, the, you know, the contest, the classes and the, what, groomer marketplace or something? Is yeah, that I forget we were? what they yeah. call the little that strip. section. The whole That's rest strip. of the show global is like Super Zoo. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I've been to it many, many, many times, even before I worked at Andes because I live in Florida. So, yeah, we would like to go and see who's giving away freebies on the last day <laughs> okay so all right part of the reason why i love super zoo <clears throat> so forget all the drama that happened in the grooming area i have no idea what happened because i was there to walk the floor and i walked the entire floor mm -hmm. right? i came home with literally a suitcase full of samples to see yep. what i like for my dogs i mean they're there are things that that once once i know my dogs will like it, i'm going to go over to my pet store i'm going to show them right. the First, I'm going to say, hey, mm -hmm. can you stop this? Because if not, I have to figure out how to buy it on my own. Sure. Right? Um, I've, it's, it's so nice to see things. All right. Yeah. Like what a lot of those people are doing is, you know, say I have a retail pet store. You know, I need to stock up my store for Christmas time. So they are coming in and placing orders with those um, companies, manufacturers, uh, and seeing their newest products. Yeah. Um, I got, I haven't set it up yet, but when I do, I will take a picture of it. I have a tiny tent for my dog, for one of my dogs. You were so excited about that. I am so excited about that. I have no idea. <clears throat> um, and it's really interesting because what they did is they take the scraps of material from a tent company mm -hmm. and they make tiny tents for like oh. dogs, cats or whatever. <clears throat> I thought that was neat. Amazing. Yeah, very That's neat. pretty cool. Yeah. So lots of cool stuff. I mean, lots. just everything. You're sort of cool yourself, Nicole. <laughs> my Siri's talking to me. Oh, no. oh my gosh. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, no. Tell tell Siri we get it. We get it. Um <clears throat> It was the watch. So so last year at Super Zoo. A lot of the booths, a lot of the new booths were just loaded with CBD products. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This year, it's mushroom products. Yes. I've been seeing a lot of them yeah. online lately, too. Yeah. So now, here, I'm just going to do a quick plug for a company that is not our sponsor. <laughs> so on the Wednesday before, I went by this booth. It's called um, OM. And so she was saying I should come back tomorrow to get some more samples. And I'm like, I can't come back tomorrow because tomorrow is Thursday and I'm teaching 10 hours of classes for, for pet first aid. And she hands me this and one for Beth. She says, trust me, this is going to help boost your, your energy levels. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. So I take it. I know. So I, so I took it. And the first class is five hours. And after the class is over, you know, we're, we're, we're already tired and we got another class yet to do exactly the same. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we, we made the booster and 
damn if we did not perk up. Really? Yes. So it worked. I, I saw her the day after. I'm like, how are you doing? Are you like dead from teaching 10 hours of CPR the day before? And she's like, actually, I feel pretty damn good. And oh, <clears throat> so did you get some more sample? I ordered four 10 packs. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, let us know because I'm curious. Like, yes. Yeah. I, when you I, use it in other situations, like, does it I really, really work? I picked up a sample, too, and I almost used okay. it today. And then I'm like, I'm having surgery in, like, two days. I don't know how this is going to affect my yeah. body. Maybe I'll take it in no. nature. Yeah. yeah I, so, sadly, I was so busy, I didn't even really watch the show. I mean, I've done it a million times, but I had, like, I literally, chance, and I was literally just zipping on my scooter because I, yeah. oh, my God, guys. So basically, and I had Friday to walk all those miles mm -hmm. to show, and I was still feeling good. Now, this morning, now you know, we come back from trade shows, we're like a little tired, you know? And so that was, oh, that yeah. was today. And I was like, God, I got all these things because I'm going to Hershey. Yeah. <clears throat> I need to start clearing out my to-do list again. I didn't want to do it. I sat here and all I wanted to do was scroll through Facebook. I was, <sighs> I was watching. I know, I, I had to work today and I'm like, Checking Facebook. I need to work. I need to work. I've been away for so many days because All American. Yeah. And like two weeks before All American, I had to go to San Diego. We did a photo video sh product shoot thing. So I was away then. So it's been kind of crazy whirlwind. And that Facebook. You how many stupid reels I watched today. And I I'm made one. I made a TikTok this weekend. I'm very proud of oh. myself. Because so it, I mean, let's talk about that because that takes a lot of work. A lot it of times, effortless, and it's hours of time and editing. If it's a lot, and a sketch, sketch, sketch. I mean, I don't know if you want to segue into this, but it's interesting because I, I've seen a lot of things lately on on social media. People saying, "Oh, these companies just want influencers that have big social media," and you know, do they want people that have social media? Mm -hmm. Yes, but they still have to be able to teach. They have to still be able yeah. to be good with dogs, like. It, you have to have that in addition to being a good educator, you know, and I think there's a, a big, I don't know what I want to call it, but it's it, like, there's a mild, we tomorrow. need to move out of this 25 yes. years ago into the present time. It's yes. just, that's what it is. And if you don't evolve with it, you're not going anywhere. It's kind of sad because, yeah. and, and, and there's mm, mm, you no, no Yeah, no, I know. I'm going to, I'm going to press a button. Is what okay. I'm do you press the button? Come back, and I know you're waiting for this one, and I also need fresh copy. I know you. Do. And speaking of continuing education, because we either were or will be, join the Andes World Class Education Team each month for live, interactive, virtual classes. You'll learn new and trending styles, as well as tips and tricks from some of the best groomers in the industry. Whether you're looking for basic skills, trending styles, advanced techniques, or even just ways to spark your creativity, the new Andist Grooming Education site is your source for finding what you need to create your way for success. Try new techniques, learn from the pros, and grow your confidence today at andist.com backslash groomer education. Traveling Groomer podcast listeners, hey, that's you, can get 25% off your first course today with the code V-E-G-R-O-O-M-I-N-G at checkout on andis.com backslash groomer education. And, and we're back. That's us. Uh, I, I know you were like wondering where it was. I rotate the commercials and I was writing the uh, order. I wasn't. Like, oh, it's perfect. We can. I knew it was there. You knew it was there. I knew it was there. <laughs> I, I, I'll just finish what I was saying before with yes. you know I all the you know I newbies up and coming people people are just getting into the industry whether they're young or older like I was when I started grooming there's so much to learn there's so many people out there that can educate um they do it in different ways I think they all have something to offer um and while I love show grooming and I show poodles I was never the best, but you know how much I can teach somebody. It's like, I'm like the perfect example of it. You know, I never made groom team. I'm, I got groom team points, but I never made groom team. And, um, but I have a lot to offer and 
my team has a lot to offer. All the people that I see out there have a lot to offer. I mean, don't be dramatic. We don't like that. But um, people learn differently. I know that's kind of like a big thing nowadays. Um, nobody and, ever used to talk about that, but it's been like that forever. Yep. Um, yeah. I think we all have a different perspective. Mm -hmm. so I'll have like some of my students go, well, you know what? I want, I want to teach a class, but someone's already teaching it. And I'm like, so what? It's going to be totally different. It's, if you have, and I, and I'd like to bring up the fact that one day, one of the shows that I don't remember which one it was, but Barkley had like four or five Bichon classes, one right after the other, all taught by five different people. Uh -huh. okay. And it's even better when they disagree. Oh, can I just say that one of the best classes I ever took, it was, um, a Jody Murphy seminar and she brought in sarah hawks and they violently disagree well, not violently <laughs> you know what i mean they they vehemently disagreed on how to thin out the beard area of any of those terriers that have <clears throat> falls or beards and the best part of the class was watching them argue about it because then you could go all right both of these ways work which way makes sense to me? Yeah, which 100%. Which one makes agree. sense for the dogs I work on? And if for whatever reason, one way isn't working on this coat, now I got another way to do it. Yeah, I. that's a great Fantastic. example. It was um, hysterical. We were, because they weren't like, and they were, they were having a, an actual debate about it. And you could mm -hmm. tell they both felt very strongly about, but they weren't like angry at each other. Nobody, yeah. no feelings were hurt. We loved it. We just like the class was just eating it up and laughing their asses off. Well, I mean, you think about too, like if, if I do something one way, somebody else do, does something another way. At the end of the day, it's what do we always say? It's hair. It'll grow back. Right. Yes. Um, I, sometimes I say there's no rule. Really? And there's, there's different tools and different ways to use different tools. I, yep. <clears throat> I will never forget the very first time I worked Hershey at the Evolution Shares booth. And I was trying to demo it to someone who was something of a name at the time. I don't know mm -hmm. what she is now, but she was a name at the time. And the thing is, Back then, I that was 10, 12 years ago. I didn't have the experience, the confidence mm -hmm. to articulate why what I was saying was correct <clears throat> for swivel shears. And I just remember her looking at me and with this, I kind of want to, <laughs> the memory makes me want to pop her in the face. I'd never actually do that, guys. I'd never actually do that on a trade show. But she had this, absolute it was that in her head she was saying bless your heart it was like <laughs> condescending yeah and rude just like ah aren't you mm -hmm. precious and stupid look, mm -hmm. the look on her face like but you know you just put the tips of your fingers in the shears and that's how you scissor that's how you're supposed that's the only right way to sit just mm. well this person says that mm. and i'm like <laughs> not uh, with swivel shears like now i'm right. like no not with swivel mm -hmm. shears but you've lasted and you stuck to it and at, you yes, learned more and, like, and at, i think everything's ever evolving all the time oh, we're all learning all the yes, time yes i'll be the first to admit it i can't remember what it was but i just learned something like a couple weeks ago i was like how did i not ever know that it'll come I, to me tomorrow what it was but you know what i'm saying though I, no? I mean I learned no. something over the weekend, like we were talking to a manufacturer. So I got to ask, this is, mm -hmm. it was amazing. I got to ask a manufacturer questions about steel and sharpening mm -hmm. and, and the different steel levels. And he said something blown like, away. I was blown away for like yeah. five minutes. I couldn't function. And all I could think of was, I'm so glad I ha have to update my everything shares class. I I have to update it. I'm glad I didn't record yeah. it for positive end yet because I didn't have to record it and go over again just for that last end bit. Oh. And honestly, that kind of brings me back to what I was saying in the beginning. 
you're going to adjust your presentation and the way you teach something, and you have an audience already for that information. That's where social media comes in. Yeah. You know, there's this, you know, people throwing out influencer, influencer. Well, I mean, there's influencers, and then there's just people that do social media. You know, very few people are true, true influencers. And I think everybody has something to offer. So, you know, take it or leave it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Move on if you don't like it. And and I think sometimes the problem with true, true influencers is like I followed, and I still follow this one beauty influencer. Not that I wear makeup every day, but I like makeup. (laughs) Me, never. (laughs) Trade show, maybe. (laughs) Anyway. I I, I, did I've been in classes where what I learned was it wasn't going to work for me. Right. right. And I think right. that is as valid as picking up something that is going to work for me. Mm-hmm. I agree. But Absolutely. What I, what I eventually got from this influencer was like, oh my God, I cannot just go out and buy things because he likes them. Yeah. Because he likes everything he talks about mostly. So um, I need to, I need to bring that down <laughs> yeah but i mean that's and, a perfect example again yes, like yes. you know a company like andis has how many corded clippers how many cordless how many this that whatever blades ultra edge ceramic edge like i like ceramic I i've like always ceramic used ceramic too. some people hate them but you know what i found early it's okay on you don't ceramic. have to use them use the other one because very early in my career, it was an Andis clipper. And I remember I got my first ceramic blade and people were like, oh, and this was 18, 20 years ago. And people were like, oh, I don't like ceramic. I'm like, you just got to feed it when you first get it. I just had to oil the bejesus out of it because it's porous. Mm-hmm. And it dried out a little in the package and I got it off the shelf at like a Petco or something. Right. And I oiled the heck out of it. And after that, it was the best blade I had. And I'm like, oh, so the ceramic is the shit. You just have to, and different things take different techniques and uses yeah. and approaches. And that's why it's important to go to these trade shows to see, like Mary said, what does or doesn't work for you. Well, I will give too. you, we had a great, um, time this week at Super Zoo, we had Tammy Seer there and Gabriel. And uh, secret, secret, there's a new clipper coming. If you didn't see it at the show, no, I um, didn't. That's what I was going to ask you. We were you using also it. Read my outline. We were using it, so it's secret, but not really anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. But either way, like Gabriel had people coming up on our little stage. Here, try the clipper. Try this. Do you want to try it? And they were like almost afraid to come up there, but they like a whole bunch of people did. Put it in their hand. Let them actually clip off dog hair. We were doing a shave down on one of the creative dogs. It was her retirement trim. So she competed with it the day before. The shortest length of the dog at the competition was like a four blade. So we took the whole dog dog down with a four. What a great opportunity for somebody to like whack some coat yeah. off. Yeah. You know, so do that's you why I love trade shows there too. To show us? No. <laughs> I'm sure some stuff will be coming out very soon. Hershey, it'll be in Hershey to see. Okay, hey, listen. Okay. I'm hoping we are we are doing a live podcast at Hershey. Oh, Friday around. We'll start at twelve thirty at on the stage where the not the stage the um where they have the groomer TV. So oh, okay, something not the stage. Want. I won't be climbing on on anything. <laughs> So yeah, you, I don't think so. Stage. If you have something you want to share? Yeah. Let us I'll know. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I awesome. will be there. We have the new fine tooth uh, blades. Those came out about a month ago. Those are amazing. Have you seen those? Nope. So they have more teeth and a different tooth geometry. Really? A really smooth cut. Oh yeah. And I will just show you because I have it here. They also, you know, how you can buy like ceramic cutters. Right. So they have these ceramic cutters in 22, 24, and 26 teeth. You can actually change out all your blades with these. So depending on what you're grooming, um, like the finish is amazing. Amazing. Like I wouldn't want to use the 26 tooth on like a matadoodle, but on a cat line cut, probably really good. 
Um, so those have been kind of, oh, people were buying them all up in Super Zoo. It was crazy. So, yeah, fun stuff. Super exciting, super exciting. So as we, we wrap it up, I think we're going to uh, skip our self-care segment and what we're drinking this week because I think everyone's self-care has been long naps after the trade shows, at least for Nicole and I, Ugh. because we were both at Chicago and then boom. Did you fly home yesterday? I got home technically yesterday. It was after midnight on Saturday. You did so, like a red eye? Yeah, I did. Like You're lucky you made it because a lot of people got canceled or delayed. Uh, well, I had a morning flight, Saturday, got home like, at five yesterday. On Was your flight on Saturday? Yes, like 6.30 in the morning or something. Oh, see, it was the earlier flight. With a layover. I think so I got home at five. Sorry, I'm sorry. I think it was the earlier And then I flew. had issues. But, you know, the show being in the middle of the week just so threw me off. Yeah. Well, and they changed the dates from the normal day. It used to be Tuesday, no. Wednesday, oh. Thursday. Oh, you have For no a year. Idea. I know. <laughs> to get I, used to that. I know. I know. And I keep, now Wednesday, I keep Thursday, Friday. Friday. What yes. day is it? <laughs> I had no, I had no idea. No I had idea. schedules that normally went up on a Saturday, um, and I actually deleted it because I thought it was posted on the wrong <laughs> day. It will mess you up. It, but it was okay. a great show. I mean, oh, the show was we did, phenomenal. We did do something for self care because we did. We, we the evolution I? team. I don't know. The team evolution did something because we oh, good. flew out of Chicago Sunday night. And yes, the flight was a little delayed, but now we didn't have any obligations on Monday. And we had a I did that. cool day with Cabana. That's nice. I did fly straight from Chicago, but I didn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> it was That was good. So that way, you know what? We figured any flight delays, we didn't have to worry about it. And we would be right. there. Monday, worst case scenario, we get in that Monday up Tuesday, night. Yeah, then we're still there and can get a good night's yeah. sleep and be there for Tuesday. Go. I've done it where I've flown home in between. I'm like, I mean, no. I'm gonna get off the plane, go home and sleep, and get back on a plane. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I did better. for Super Zoo because we went on vacation and came home Saturday night and then flew out Monday morning. Yeah. Well, and just look in like two weeks, we got to go to Hershey. Which I love Hershey anyway. At least so. I get to drive to Hershey. At least I get to drive. Oh, yeah. All right. I will fly. But that'll be a great show, too. So. All right, guys. It is that time again. It has been about an hour at least. Probably a scooch over. But, Nicole, thank you. This was fun. We yeah. really enjoyed chatting with you and digressing and finding out more about all the stuff Andis does in the animal care community because screw humans. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do great stuff with the people. I mean, we love humans at Anda. You know. Okay, Andis can love the humans because I'm like, whatever. I'm a little bit mm -hmm. whatever with most humans. All right. Except Here. for our listeners. I love all of you. Oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Safe travels, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. Well, that was fun. But now it's time to head home. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed chatting with you. If there are any topics you'd like us to discuss or guests you want to see join us on this crazy road trip of ours, let us know in the Traveling Groomers Facebook page. Don't forget to thank our sponsors. And see you next week, guys. Safe travels.